Let's move on to strategy number seven. This one is called Dynamic Cross-Exchange Market Making. And it's also from a team. This is from Chris and Gary. So actually, this one's I sent a link to the video, but let me let me find the the, the design first. I think this uh, it's this one here. So so th this one uh, this one is a cross exchange market making strategy. So really use really using one of the flagship strategies, Hummingbot. But uh, this one looks like they they're using more than one maker venue potentially, and, and I think this is actually a good a really good customization because right now the the the, the basic cross exchange strategy only market makes on one one market and hedges on another market. But as we all know, there's tokens that have, have they might trade on Binance, but they have 10 different other exchanges where they trade. So I think having a single strategy, they can make multiple markets based on a single taker market is a really good idea. It looks like they've also integrated some inventory skew logic here so that the volatility has is, is too high, then they can adjust the strategy based on volatility. So I, I really appreciate how much detail they, they, they filled out uh, this template on because I, I do think this template, if you know exactly what events you're going to trigger, what the logic is, what your inputs and outputs are, uh, it helps you define the strategy. So let's take a look at uh, the video. Hi, everybody. This is the BotCamp 11 presentation by Gary and Chris. We developed a uh, cross exchange market maker code. So, what is the idea behind that? We're using Hummingbot's cross exchange market maker function and intend to monetize the pricing differences across different crypto exchanges. Why do they exist in the first place? In crypto, depending on the trading pair, you tend to have fragmented liquidity across different exchanges. During volatile markets, there can be a latency issue as well, where one price reacts first and the other one takes longer to react. Or simply, it can be created by asymmetric order flow, where one exchange, for example, sees a very large amount of sell orders, and the other one is uh, more balanced between buy and sell orders. In a strategy like this, what you really are doing is you're transferring liquidity from a liquid reference exchange, in our example, Binance, we call it the take exchange, to a less liquid or a liquid target venue, for example, like HTX, which we call the make exchange. And you're posting limit orders on both venues. The idea is that in fact, the price on the make exchange will be different enough from the take exchange that you're able to arbitrage this difference and capture the spread, even after taking into account the taker fees and potential hedge slippage you're still able to lock in profit. We also include a volatility filter using Bollinger Band to help to understand the market regime because we want to remove all orders from the exchange during very volatile market conditions to protect our PL. So how does it work in the basics? Ideally, you are able to buy on the make exchange substantially below where you're able to sell on the take exchange. And that even includes the uh, fees that you have to pay for both exchanges. And then you're able to monetize this theoretical profit, which is basically where you buy, including fees, and where you sell, including fees, or the other way around. If we now look into our logic, we start with on tick. In the next point, we look at the candle data from the Make Exchange, and then we look at our volatility validation. Is the Bollinger bandwidth smaller than 2% or larger than 8%? Empirically, it has been proven when the Bollinger Band is extremely small or extremely wide, periods of large volatility follow. If this is volatility validation is confirmed, then all orders are cancelled and it's pause return to on tick. If it's normal, we validate the inventory skewness. In our example, we start with a 50-50 mix. This can be adjusted as you need. Then we verify whether the arbitrage exists. So we calculate the profitability. If it does exist, then we place limit orders. And if those limit orders get filled, we update the PL. Otherwise, it's back to the beginning and we restart on tick. So before we talk about considerations and improvements, let's jump into the code itself. All right. So this is basically the setup in the config file exactly as we had it set out in the presentation. Now, there's a few limitations which we talk about in a moment. We tweaked that a bit, and this is our updated configuration file. Let's go here and run the code. All right, here we go. So we can see here on the right that the connectivity to HDX and Binance works. Let's have a quick look at the status. So here we can see that there's a buy order and a sell order being entered at the moment. It's on uh, this instance here, HDX and Binance. The profitability check has been disabled. Bollinger bandwidth is 0 0.056 and is considered normal under these updated Nonetheless, as we can see, given the trading pair ETH and US dollars and also the fee level that we are on with both exchanges, none of the trades is being actually executed. Let's go over the considerations and improvements potentially. 
So the Bollinger Band at the moment is calculated also on a one minute candle time frame, which is a very, very uh, small time frame for the Bollinger Bands. Typically, they're used for much longer time frames. So this is one of the limitations where we would have to consider calculating the Bollinger Band and in line with that moving average to match a longer time frame. The second one we just touched up on is the exchange fees, which are reducing the amount of uh, PNL opportunities that exist. And also the uh, trading pair we used EUSDT because Gary and I, we both are ETH maxis, but obviously other trading pairs offer a very high profitability by comparison because ETH USDT is extremely efficient and arbitrage opportunities are very rare. The other thing that can be adjusted is the inventory skew. We use the 50-50 split, but obviously if you're able to have a bit more flexibility on that, more trades can be executed. And then lastly, latency is uh, one way of uh, being able to arbitrage these very liquid markets if you're co-hosting your setup with one of the exchanges. All right. And then additionally, what we have done is, because it's very hard to backtest cross-exchange market, mar market making strategies, we have effectively created this 11-point notebook that validates our strategy and clearly highlights those type of uh, limitations that we just talked about. So for example, um, if I go here into the Bollinger Band, you can see it's extremely tight. It's very close to the spot price. Hence, it's not very useful as an indicator just yet. It would need to use a different frequency than the than the one minute candles. And, and then uh, we have effectively here the uh, volatility conditions again, where only 0.8% would be considered normal, 99.2% would be considered extremely volatile. So again, this is really something that needs to be addressed uh, the inventory skewness at the moment is perfectly balanced. This could be changed in one way or the other. And yeah, this is giving you a good idea. The link is also up with our presentation. And we would like to thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to receive your comments. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for the presentation, uh, Chris and Gary. Uh, I, I do think that this is really, I think this is a very useful strategy because this is really the basis, uh, in my opinion, of a lot of the professional market making strategy out there where they're basically helping small to medium cap token issuers just get liquidity on lots of venues based on their primary venue. And I think some of the modifications you mentioned uh, make, make a lot of sense because in in practice, people, if you're running cross exchange anyway, you might as well add arbitrage to it if the opportunity arises. And, and I think a lot of the actual legwork from having run it myself really comes down to rebalancing. Because usually what happens is one exchange is always kind of higher than another exchange for a period of time. And so the decision always comes down to, do you use inventory skew to rebalance? Or are you kind of like, you know, waiting until your inventory runs out and then you can manually rebalancing. Anyone else have questions or, uh, or feedback for Chris and Gary? No, um, just a comment. I think, as I mentioned uh, to them, I think it's a really good idea, uh, a good strategy because from the type of strategy that you have, this is the most you know, high tech slash conservative that you are going to be good if you are very disciplined and you can manage inventory across a bunch of exchanges. But if you do it well, it's like you have a business, you're a tax collector in that case. So okay. congratulations. And I do think, I don't know if you guys are interested in actually building a business, but I think if you guys are actually doing a market making business, I think you're, most market making companies are basically running lots of bots like this. Thank you. So th this strategy indeed is, uh, is for the more risk averse people. <laughs> so the, the of controls there that help to uh, avoid volatility and, and profit checks. Um, indeed, uh, Chris has some uh, potential customers for uh, with the, the holder of tokens and, and want to do this, uh, the, the market making stuff. Actually, I would say that I think that we're actually seeing more activity in this in our Dev Wanted channel. I actually made a Dev MM Wanted uh, because I realized that a lot of the folks who are joining the channel were trying to hire market makers, uh, and so uh, and I do think we're going to try to make the certified folks more prominent in that in that channel, so that uh, they'll pick any token issuers that want to hire market makers. Will, will hopefully pick the certified folks first. All right. Well, thank you, uh, thank, thank you for all the patience as well. I was uh, bothering uh, Fede on the store a lot. Thank you so much. I is playing this. That is why we are here to help you with your, with your ideas and your strategies. So I'm very happy to help. Thank you both.